as you learn more and more chemistry, you find out that things that, that we teach you in the past kind of get changed around to become either better explained or we clear up some of the lies that we've taught you. You know, for instance, all the reactions that we write all the time have this arrow pointing from reactants to products that says, look, at these things make this. And for all we know, it's just a 100% reaction all the time. But you know what? We've also talked about how reactions can be reversed. And if that's true, maybe reactions can actually be reversed at any given time in an enclosed container. They can. And that causes all kinds of, well, interesting chemistry. Take for instance, if you have a bag full of H2 molecules and then a bag full of I2 molecules, and then they're all bouncing around in here, collision theory is going to tell us that as molecules collide with sufficient force, we can reach a certain activation energy and get them to maybe even separate the H's from each other and the I's from each other. Now they might recombine and form H2's and I2's again, but they could actually mix together and form HI's in that container. Now, here's the thing. So that makes perfectly good sense. But interestingly, at any given temperature, what will eventually happen in these enclosed containers is that we will get virtually a consistent amount of HI after a certain period of time in here in, in comparison to how much I2 and H2 is left. And that's where we've reached something called equilibrium. The definition of equilibrium, chemical equilibrium, is that the concentration of reactants, like H2 and I2 here, remain constant over time. And so do the products. The HI amount remains constant over time. When reactants and product concentrations remain consistent over time. Now, now we talk about rate in terms of in terms of if we add a little bit of heat, maybe the rate of reaction will go up. But the point is about equilibrium is that at any given temperature, the rate of forward reaction equals the rate of reverse reaction. When you've got that happening, then you have to have consistent amounts of products and reactants over time. And that, again, is equilibrium. And we talked about that then as being in a closed container. Equilibrium must be in a closed system. You cannot have matter entering and leaving and call that equilibrium because it just won't be. But if in a closed system you have a rate of forward and reaction equaling each other, now that is consistent and equilibrium. So it has to be in a closed container or closed environment. You cannot have matter passing in and out. Energy can. Uh, so it's, uh, it's not a completely uh, isolated system, but it is closed. So those are definitions for equilibrium. Aside from the fact that once we have achieved equilibrium, the particles aren't just sitting still because you still have to have a rate of forward and reverse reaction. So equilibrium is a dynamic process, not static. We can actually put an equilibrium system into water and uh, well, we'll start off by putting some salt into water and stirring it around. Now, here's what you know, and this is probably from your junior chemistry course. That, you stir that around, and eventually when all of the solute dissolves into the solvent to make the solution, solution, that you can have here an unsaturated condition if you can still dissolve more crystals into the solution. Okay then that is unsaturated, but it's not an equilibrium. What we have to do is we have to dump a lot in, and then eventually, even though we are really stirring vigorously, no more solute dissolves into the solvent to make the solution. That's when we have actually an equilibrium situation. Now, again, at the big level, big view, macroscopic, I don't know what's happening, not very much, but at the microscopic level, there are crystals that are remaining on the bottom that are actually dissolving in at the same time that dissolved solute is re-entering into the solid phase. And so what we have then is the rate of dissolving equaling the rate of recrystallization, and that's equilibrium. And because the solute can't actually escape from the liquid, that's a closed system for the solute.